hey guys welcome back to my channel um this video is going to be one of multiple videos i'm going to be doing about medical school interviews so i've been invited to multiple medical schools in the past and have sat there interviews and i'm going to make a series about the questions asked and the process involved so this video is going to be about ucl um, so I applied to UCL Medical School and I got an interview and I'm just going to talk about the process as well as a few of the questions and the feedback that I got from that interview. So the way that UCL gives out their interviews is pretty much done on a holistic basis so it's not purely based on stats. Um, or at least this was with my year and I'll also put in some advice and guidance um, on the sides. Um, for the year that i'm going to post this please be assured that i am going to post the most up-to-date um information based on what ucl have at the moment on their website so when i applied to ucl um the way that they would give interviews out was pretty much done on a very holistic basis so you didn't have to have the most amazing stat to get an interview equally you needed to have decent enough stats with something else holding up your application so that might be um the rest of your application so your personal statement or your reference but ucl have recently said that they are not going to be using the personal statement as part of the selection process for interviews but they will be looking at the bmat alone this was quite evident when i would look on the student room to see what other people who had applied to ucl got so whether they got a rejection or an interview space and there were loads of people that had really amazing stats but didn't get an interview at ucl um which again was quite surprising but there must have been other parts in their application which may not have been as strong as others and that would probably be the reason why they weren't successful in getting an interview also the reason why i used the student room is because i was one of two people applying to medical school and i was the only one to even get a interview um let alone multiple interviews um so yeah i had to rely on the student room to actually even understand what was going on in the applicant community at that time um but um looking back now that wasn't the best thing to do but there was literally nothing else I could have done, um, to be fair. Otherwise, I think I would have been disadvantaged more so than what I already was at the time. The way that UCL give out interviews, it's done on a rolling basis from around December to March. And again, that is also the current up to date guidance as well. They will give them out on a rolling basis. What that means is people are going to hear about them. Um, at basically any point between December and March and you'll get about a week notice um, before you actually do your interview. So again, this happened to me. My interview, I think I got around, I mean, I can't remember exactly when I got it. My interview was done online. So to be honest, uh, I think it was a panel. Um, it was a quite an interesting experience. So I had two people who acted as the panel because um, again I think I was like one of the last years to do the panel interviews. Um, now they're doing MMIs or at least they anticipate to do MMIs for the 2023 application cycle onwards. Again because it was all on Zoom they were like at their own homes um, which one of the like downsides to that is interviewers can get distracted being in their homes and the reason why I say that is because when I had my interview um, one of the interviewers had her pets in the room and the cat jumped on the table and was like in the webcam like at the front of the webcam so all I could see was like cat and fur um, and in that moment like I continued saying my answer but I definitely felt like that was a little bit like it didn't necessarily th throw me off but i feel like it could have thrown other people off um but yeah it was a little bit i was a bit confused about what to do but again i just carried on the fact that i did the interview on my ipad i couldn't see both of the faces at the same time i don't think i had like fully understood how the platform that i was using how that would work so i didn't actually know that, that there were two interviewers uh interviewing me on till the other person spoke and then the screen switched to them and i was a little like i don't i don't really know if it could 
if it showed on my face but I was a little bit like oh there's another person here so oh yeah that kind of took me by surprise but again I kind of just wish I had done more prep beforehand uh, in regards to online interviews using a similar software i think what was quite surprising for my year and i presume onwards is that they don't have your personal statement and they don't have your be my essay but i cannot say for sure as to whether they will do that um this year and onwards because again it was pretty random like no one knew whether we were gonna have those things in our interviews but my interview prep did take into account the fact that they could potentially be looking at our personal statements and BMAT essays so when you do it or if you have already done it um, just make note of like what you've written about or at least know what question you picked because you might be asked questions like that in your interview um, but again I didn't get asked anything from my personal statement or my BMAT essay I kind of wish they did because I think it would have shown a lot of interesting aspects about me as a person that I don't think could have necessarily have been portrayed through the other questions that they had asked me which i will get into later on in the video so some of the questions that they asked me um i will get into but um i'm not going to give them sort of as explicitly as they were given because if you've had interviews before you'll know that you will have to sign ndas which means that you can't share the questions with other people some of the questions that you should look out for would be things like why this university why this course i think those are pretty standard questions that you should be able to answer for any and every medical school that you've applied for i would say the general style of questions you can find very freely and readily available online there's an interview book which has questions which are very very similar to those um, asked on the panel one question that i can't exactly remember word for word what was said but it was something along the lines of um the experience of being a london student so a student in london and I was very confused as to why they asked a question relating to this um, because I didn't really know what to say. Um, I'm from London anyway and again I don't think that they knew this um, because I got feedback after the interview and I'll explain why I don't think that they knew this. But this is also why I would say if they had my personal statement there they would have a better understanding as who I was as a person and also I don't think that they would have given the feedback they did. Um, post interview I was very confused because I was like I don't really understand what challenges a London student would have apart from like the fact that you're in London it's quite overpopulated so I just kind of thought on a logistical basis in terms of like placements and things like that um, because UCL is a very very big medical school um, again I still don't understand to this day what they wanted and I remember asking other medical students what their opinion was on this question and what they would have said and they were like i do not know why they would ask that and they didn't even know what they would say for that question which i think just speaks for itself it was very confusing maybe because i was already a student in london challenges that other people might face doesn't necessarily apply to me because i live those challenges so i don't necessarily see them as a challenge um, I don't know it's kind of interesting but again it was such a random question and there was there's obviously a lot of space for better questions to ask but that's what they decided to ask me and in terms of some general stats so around one in three interviewees get an offer so essentially you have a really really high chance of getting in considering there are medical schools that interview like one in like eight people get a space so if you do get a interview at UCL you have a pretty high chance to get an offer also part of my um, medical interview process at UCL involved a debrief so there was like a zoom session held afterwards a post interview like a few days later um, with a group of other interviewees to basically just answer any questions that you might have relating to the process which I thought was really nice as well um, and I believe they had that before the interview process. And if anybody was interested in terms of my BMAT um, score, um, so in the essay I got a 5A which is really high and I do feel like that probably played an impact um, with me getting an interview because again UCL 
do like the essay part but I obviously can't say for sure as if that played a part or not um and then I can't remember exactly but I want to say uh, in one of the first two sections I got 4.9 and the other one 5.1 um which again it's like pretty strong just as a side note I really preferred the BMAT over the UK and I, I think that really showed and reflected in the scores that I got as well um I really enjoy the BMAT in the sense that it, it's literally GCSE knowledge and it's science and maths and English and at the time also I think definitely part of the reason as to why I did well is because I also did an essay based subject at A level that really helped me with my essay section for the BMAT. Again uh, things like predicted grades or achieved grades, um, your personal statement, BMAT and anything in your reference would be really important for the medical school to understand but again the updated advice for 2023 and possibly onwards is that for interview invitations they'll be looking at the BMAT alone. Now I'm going to talk about the feedback that I got from UCL post interview. So they liked the answer for one of the questions they asked. Again this particular question was about qualities so again it should already be part of your repertoire of questions that you will ask yourself or discuss with other people or even find online and in books. So things about qualities, learn them because they'll come up in a lot of medical school interviews anyway. Throughout practice you'll learn to articulate yourself quite well and it will come across as if you really know what you're saying and I just think that that's really good in itself. Again what they said that I needed to improve on was what it's like being a doctor slash student which I understand to an extent because I don't think that they saw like the full under I don't think they got the full understanding of my experiences and like actually what I know about what it's like to be a doctor or a medical student and that's why I feel like if they had my personal statement it would help give a better insight into a lot of the activities that I have done beforehand because I have been doing things like attending outreach events for multiple years prior. Again, I just don't think that I had enough prep to kind of speak at length where I even give examples without them even prompting you, which is something that I definitely had to try to learn. Um, and it's the fact that even if it feels unnatural, when you are describing a quality or an experience, you need to give like additional examples, even though they haven't specified and it definitely feels really unnatural when you're doing it because in real life you wouldn't almost speak in a PEE paragraph style um, but you kind of have to do it. Um, I definitely felt awkward and weird when I was doing my prep afterwards for interviews um, because it does feel unnatural because you wouldn't do that in a normal conversation with somebody but that's kind of what they were looking for. Um, and you also can't expect them to prompt you all the time by saying okay but when have you used this where in your life or where in the workplace might you use this or what personal experience have you experienced to demonstrate this like they're not going to push you that far it's something that you need to do yourself to demonstrate that to the interviewer so again i think through that through the lack of like communicating that across they obviously had this impression that i don't really have a good understanding of um, what it's like being a doctor and a medical student even though in my opinion at that point I felt like I knew quite a bit obviously I don't know absolutely everything um, but I definitely think in comparison to those to others that I knew um, I definitely felt like I had a good uh, understanding but again it's quite interesting when you see the feedback because it kind of tells you okay this is clearly where I went wrong um, I actually have this or I know what I would say um, but again it tells you what you need to improve on in terms of what you talk about in terms of what you choose to share after the interview at some point do message the medical school for feedback on your interview um, maybe do that once you get a decision so whether it's like a rejection or not if it's not then it's fine um, but I think it's always really helpful to understand exactly where you went wrong or what you might improve on for your next interview 
which I think is really valuable because it might pick up on something that you think you do really well. For example, like me, I feel like I have the examples for what it's like being a doctor and being a medical student, but I think it helps you realise what you need to articulate more um, and what you need to communicate more clearly across to the interviewer. So definitely do ask um, for feedback. I think that's really valuable. Also, so you can later down the line help other people, which is what I'm trying to do now. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you like the video. I will be making more medical school series videos later. And again, if you have any other questions, please feel free to message me.